back here in Detroit, our continuing coverage of the Viper Championship. Ryan Simonelli taking on Michael Haugen Jr. But first, Randy's quick tip this week will focus on oil patterns. Hey folks, let's talk about oil patterns. Now the oil patterns that you're gonna bowl on are a lot different than what we bowl on out here on the PBA Tour. You're bowling on a house shot, dry to the outside, a lot of oil in the middle. Your objective is to try to get right in between the two. That way, if you miss target wide, the ball's gonna hook back. If you miss inside, it's gonna hit all that oil and hold its line. As the lanes break down throughout the night, make sure that you move to the inside part of the lane. That's gonna keep you in the pocket. So here's what I took away from that, Randy. Last call, get wide right for me, right? Well played, Rob. <laughs> Time now for semifinal number two. He owns two titles and one major, the 08 Tournament of Champions from Carefree, Arizona. Please welcome Michael Haugen, Jr. <laughs> MHJ only bowled in five events last season because of a partial tear in his ACL. Remember, his only major came at the expense of Chris Barnes. He ended up beating Chris Barnes by one in 215 to 214. From Buffalo, New York, welcome Ryan Simonelli. Ryan Simonelli came awfully close last week to winning his first ever career title. He got a really good taste in his mouth, but didn't finish the deal. Today, he is looking to punch his ticket to the title match and go up against fellow Southpaw, Rhino Page. Here's how we got to the semifinals. We go back to quarterfinal play. Ryan Simonelli went up 3-0 over Thomas Smallwood, lost the fourth one, won the next one to win it 4-1. And Jack Jurek threw an open frame in the first frame of game number six. And that was all Michael Haugen Jr. needed. 246, 238. Haugen moves on to the semis. So semifinal number two gets underway now with Ryan Simonelli, the native of Buffalo, New York. That's how you start. Boy, he doesn't leave anything in the bag either, does he? Mm -mm. He just gets an absolute handful at the bottom of the swing and rips the cover off the ball. Former All-American at Erie Community College, not an exempt bowler. Michael Haugen Jr. is, however. This is his 13th year on the tour. Six of them have been exempt. He's won two tour titles. Push. Steve, what did you do to this lane? And right out of the gate, Michael Haugen Jr. starts off with the lion shot, Rob. You're going to have to uh, educate me. I don't know what a lion shot is. Tells you he threw that one good. He's lying. Ah, da dun dun ching. Well played, Randall. You're in mid-season form already. The big four. Down to the big two. So an open frame eight in the first for Haugen. Michael Haugen Jr. You see wearing an earpiece. And he also has a microphone. We can converse with him in match and we will do that just a little bit later his 10th career tv finals appearance had that acl tear in his knee last year which really hindered him all season long that's oh, going to go high too right through the nose he was 76th at the motor city open 51st last week at cheetah will be in the top four this week well it could be the Inactivity from last season for Michael Haugen Jr. and first couple of shots in television were always rough. So Haugen picks up that one, his first spare of the match after the open frame in the first. Time now for the Flomax weekly update and Ryan Simonelli. Wow, what a start to the season he has made the TV show in two of the first three shows of the season was second last week at the Cheetah Championship, falling to Norm Duke. So Simonelli opens up with the pair. And he had some issues last week at the Cheetah Championship, particularly with that Husky 7 pin. Yeah, the same pair of lanes, 9 and 10, using urethane equipment like he's using Today, the seven pin was the undoing, and that's basically what cost him 
the match against Norm Duke, and then he tried to start figuring out how to create carry, went to different balls, none of it worked. There's his dad, Angelo, 70 years old. Uh, Ryan describes him as a full roller back in his day when the Buffalo Masters and the Onawanda Masters in the same year. And, ah, look what is standing, the seven pin. Man, you're good. You just mention it, and it pops up, it appears. Can you say a million dollars for Randy, please? A million dollars for Randy, please. Nothing. Yeah. Again, the issues that plagued him last week, again, pop up. You've got to ask yourself, you know, what's this going to do to this young man mentally? That's a lot of speed, a lot of heat and a lot of revs. What do you think Simonelli learned losing in the title match last week to Duke? I think he learned patience. I think he learned how to cope with uh, in, an immense amount of pressure that he's never felt before in his career. Here's Haugen Jr. You see how he made it to the semis. There's his first strike in the semifinal match, the native of Carefree Arizona. You know somebody put some, invested some time thinking up the name of that town. Yeah, and it actually fits Michael Haugen Jr. to a T. I mean, where else would he live but Carefree Arizona? I like it. I feel relaxed just thinking about it. And perhaps a little hot. Relaxed and hot. It is Arizona. And dry. Now get a hit. You guys like that? Haugen. There's your hit. Doubles. Back to back jacks. In the third and the fourth. Michael, slow start, but you doubled up. What's going on out there? Oh, uh, man, I just threw the first ball bad. I just tugged it. And, you know, the fronts are gone. I got to roll it through the front. And I didn't roll it through the front. I tried to help it. Last two shots, I just made sure I rolled it out to the spot and it came back and kicked the Kens out. So, just got to keep doing that, right, Randy? It's good stuff. And we appreciate Michael joining us this week on PBA Inside Angle. When we return, our continuing coverage of semifinal number two.